and news and updates from across the SUNY system. Also, renovations are planned for the historic Oswego building. What's in store for the nearly 180-year-old structure? WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Sana Zakiri. And I'm Jason Samsel. A historic Oswego train depot is now under new ownership, and the new owner is looking to transform the building. Mayor Rob Corradino approved the request Monday to provide a new $1 million grant aiming to restore the 1849 built building. The building was the first railroad depot in Oswego and is one of the oldest railroad structures in the state. The building's new owner, Jonathan Shaver, told the committee that he intends to transform the historic building into a brewery and restaurant. Oswego City Council says the train depot has been sitting empty for decades and they hope that its development will lead to more revitalization in the area. SUNY Oswego's CIFA raises awareness for breast cancer across campus. The State Employees Federated Appeal has been running their campaign throughout the month of October with Pink Day taking place earlier today. Those who donated received various prizes such as Stanley mugs, flowers, and various Pink Day apparel. They were also encouraged to partake in the offered photo ops, pink hockey jersey raffle, and informative sessions. All proceeds were pledged to the Oswego County, to the Oswego County Cancer Services. SUNY Oswego is hosting Pride and Prejudice, a look back at the campus's over 50-year history of the LGBTQ plus community. The event, which takes place, which is part of Outtober, takes place tomorrow in the auditorium of the Murano Campus Center. As part of the event, a panel discussion moderated by Professor Eric Wade looks back at the history and activism of the LGBTQ plus community at the campus of Oswego. The event begins at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. Syracuse University is suspending their Psi Upsilon chapter over hazing allegations. This makes Psi Upsilon the second fraternity at the university to be suspended just this month. Alan Grove, senior vice president of the university, put out multiple statements speaking against the issue. Syracuse University says that they have long valued the role of Greek life in their community and have no space for hazing on their campus. Psi Upsilon will be suspended at the university until further notice. 90-year-old Janet Sergey of Selena has passed away after sustaining injuries in a house fire last Wednesday. Both Janet and her husband Thomas were found early Wednesday morning and taken to Upstate Hospital in critical condition. Thomas Sergey passed away in the hospital on Monday at the age of 95. Fire investigation crews believe that the fire was accidental, likely caused by a heater. Jason, isn't the fall foliage looking beautiful? Oh yeah, it's looking beautiful and the weather has uh, been beautiful for the last couple days. We'll uh, see if it continues, that trend continues and our uh, Storm 10 meteorologist Christopher Convey has more. Yes, so right here, our second summer that we had today will end as we have a cold front entering into tonight, which will bring some increase in clouds and breezy wet conditions this weekend. Well, we'll have a fall feeling upcoming next week. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Jason. I'm here with what's going on around the SUNY system. Firstly, SUNY Chancellor John B. King Jr. announced the first report of the SUNY Transfer Task Force. The task force helps, aims to help students who move between colleges, especially community colleges, to SUNY schools. SUNY schools have been working for several years to improve the transfer system. The latest task force aims to maximize credit acceptances, provide additional system-wide resources, and help provide transfer partnerships. A new AI-based supercomputer is making its way to the University of Albany. The supercomputer is worth $16.5 million and considered the central pillar in UAlbany's AI Plus initiative. The university is pushing to incorporate teaching students about AI into their curriculum, so they are prepared to live and work in a world dramatically changed by technology. Governor Kathy Hochul expressed her excitement for the future of the university as she's the founder of the Empire AI Consortium for universities across New York. 
SUNY schools in the Buffalo region are working with lawmakers to close the opportunity gap for students. Buffalo State and SUNY Erie are both helping support the advancing completion through engagement and advancing success in associate pathways programs. These, prog these programs aim to supply over 500 students with funding to help make college more accessible. This includes aid for things like textbooks, academic assistance, and even groceries. That's what's going on around the SUNY system. Back to you, Jason. Coming up later tonight, a woman is found dead in a Walmart. What investigators have to say and a father-son golfing outing turns into a tragedy. How his son stepped up. Jill Should told me it was him? Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> What's what's going on? Yeah, it's dude. This we go on at like eleven thirty. It's like no. What do you mean no? It's ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yeah, it's ten thirty. What do you mean it's ten thirty? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey man. Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted ten percent? Wow. Wow. Get a closer for that one. Matthew, Matthew can you look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. But that won't last long as we'll be having a cold front coming across Lake Ontario tonight, which will be bringing chilly and rain conditions for this weekend. As we look at our future forecast for wind gusts, currently you can see if you get out after late night, you'll have wind gusts of 20 miles per hour. And as through the night, it will increase. For the least, for the, what? and to the for the winds versus trash, you'll have your neighbor. They'll be into your neighbor's yard. For predicted temperatures, as you can see tonight from the cold front, temperatures will drop into the mid 40s for tomorrow morning, and as throughout the day, it'll go into the high 40s until we'll end, hit into the 30s. For Thursday night, even into freezing conditions of 32, but will rise Friday morning with mid 50s. So, for your weekend forecast, Friday will have mostly cloudy conditions at 57 with winds of 5 to 7 miles per hour. Saturday is our wet and windy conditions, being very breezy at 54. And at Sunday, we'll have a chance of showers at 50 degrees. So for your future cast, quality conditions starting off tomorrow morning at 40 to 46 degrees. As those clouds will decrease, and we'll have full sunshine by Thursday night. With those clear conditionings going on into Friday morning, as you can see with increasing clouds and a chance of rain Friday night. So, tonight, 
Showers likely with breezy conditions at 45 degrees with morning showers happening tomorrow at the temperature of 52. And as we look at our seven day forecast, mostly cloudy on Thursday and Friday with wet conditions this Saturday while we'll have uh, fall feeling temperatures starting next week. Back to you guys at the desk. Migrants who are living in hotels in Albany are looking for a new place to live. New York City hired DACO to help re relocate migrants earlier this year. The agreement between the New York City government and Albany hotels is set to expire this December. Migrants will be transferred into local and state housing programs. A local Rochester teenager ran to his father's rescue when his dad collapsed during an afternoon golf outing. Reporter Carly Miner has more on what the family has to say about the incident. His son Jack and a friend were on hole five at Ravenwood Golf Course in Victor when John collapsed on the green. Completely um, was a shock to me. When I woke up in the hospital, I was completely you know, surprised as to what I was doing in the hospital. I had no idea. Jack says that right up to the point his dad fell, he showed no signs of cardiac arrest. Screamed in for help and I ran to the cart and uh, called 911 right away. And I told him like how my dad looked. He, he had this purple color on his head. 911 operators told Jack to start performing CPR, a skill he learned as a Victor High School freshman. I was pretty scared. I was just praying um, the whole time. And then once we got to the hospital and I got to see him, and the doctor said, like, um, CPR helped a lot. URMC Dr. Krishna Rao was one of the doctors who cared for John. After the August 31st incident, Jack is now being called a hero. That initial CPR is necessary to continue to allow the blood flow to continue so that his brain and rest of the body functions are maintained. Here, this teenage 15-year-old uh, kid demonstrated that heroic efforts and the skills and the courage needed to um, act promptly. And because of that, uh, he could save his father. The crabs want their story to encourage people to get CPR certified. It doesn't take that long. It's not very hard to do. You never know when you'll need it. But if you do need it, you, you might be saving um, a family member or, or anyone's life. Carly Miner, 13 Wham News. Following this event, the Crab family is pushing everyone to get CPR certified. Police are investigating the death of a 19-year-old woman who was found inside a walk-in oven. Walmart in Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia was evacuated following a call to the authorities. Investigators are working with the Occupational Health and Safety Department to discover the manner of the death. Officers say this type of incident while t will take a long time to investigate. Five people are dead and 22 injured following a terrorist attack on a Turkish aerospace company. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but Turkish Defense Minister Yasar Guler says the Kurdistan Workers' Party could be behind the attack. Two of the attackers were killed and three of the injured are in critical condition. The U.S. State Department is tracking reports of the attack. Coming up after the break, an E. coli outbreak at McDonald's. And Chick-fil-A is planning something new, but it's not something you'll expect. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm Team 10!
Jill Should told me it was him? Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? It's Al Roker. <laughs> Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. In consumer news, General Motors is on track to have near record profits this year, but not without controversy. The automaker reported their third quarter earnings were much stronger than expected and puts them on the record, uh, puts them on track for record earnings of the year 2024. However, concerns were raised after the company said they could not afford its workers to pay demands during last year's United Auto Workers strike. Nevertheless, workers ended up getting a 24% wage increase over the time over the next four years. Apple and Goldman Sachs will be paying $89 million as part of a settlement with the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The CFPB said issues arose when Apple neglected to send tens of thousands of dollars of Apple Card dis disputes to Goldman Sachs. They also claimed that Goldman Sachs did not follow federal law when investigating the disputes they received. As part of the settlement, Goldman Sachs will have to pay $20 million to customers for compensation. Over 600 varieties of frozen waffles, Belgian waffles, and pancakes have been recalled from stores across the U.S. due to possible listeria contamination. Treehouse Foods, the producer of the product, said the expanded recall includes all products made at one facility and that are still within their shelf life. Listeria symptoms include fever, muscle aches, and fatigue. Customers are urged to throw away any possibly affected products away. Would you like a side of television with your chicken sandwich? Chick-fil-A is planning to launch a new app next month with animated shows, podcasts, and games aimed at families. According to Dustin Britt, Chick-fil-A executive's uh, director of brand strategy, the new app aims to capitalize on the connection between mealtime and content con consumption. The Chick-fil-A Play app is available for pre-download on iPhones, iPads, and Android devices and will release on November 18th. Coming up with some top sports stories, Michael Shetler. Michael, what's going on in the sports world today? Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Shetler with some top sports stories. The Oswego women's soccer team got the job done in their matchup earlier tonight against Buffalo State in a pretty 1-0 finish. The junior out of Rock Tavern, New York, Amber McDermott, ripped a shot in the back of the net 24 minutes into the first half, thanks to an assist by Emma Rictorvey. It was a defensive battle for the remainder of the game as the Lakers were able to get the job done and advance to 9-5-1 on the season. Ring chasing, an art of professional sports where a player winding down in their career takes their talent to a powerhouse team with championship aspirations with the hope of getting that one championship that has eluded them their whole career. Earlier this morning, legendary wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins was traded to the Kansas City Chiefs for a fifth round pick that can become a fourth round pick. The five-time Pro Bowler joins the reigning Super Bowl champs as he looks to hold the Lombardi just once before hanging up the cleats. That's all for me. When we return, the legendary Jacob Coleman will have your nightly sports report. Stay with us on WTOP 10. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Shine on that black. Look apple. at the bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. Yep. Ten out of connection. ten recommend on Yelp. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? 
Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Kevin! Welcome back. I am Jacob Coleman here to continue the Oswego Sports Tonight. Moving over to the ice now, the women's hockey team will play their last exhibition matchup this Saturday versus the London Devilettes at 3 p.m. This will be the la last Lakers game until the regular season is underway. In their first exhibition on the 19th, the Lakers had put on a dominating offensive streak, scoring six goals to win 6-1. to one. They look to keep the goals coming headed into the season, and they will begin their season November 1st versus William Smith College. To the pro levels now, the NBA season is finally underway as of yesterday. Tip-off occurred on TNT television as the new-look New York Knicks went on the road into a hostile Boston arena to play the defending national champions, the Boston Celtics. The Celtics, after celebrating their ring ceremony, got to work quickly and put up 43 points in just the first quarter. They didn't look back and totaled over 90 points from just three-point shots. That tied an NBA all-time record. The Celtics would dominate and win 132 to 109. Over to some NFL news now. One of, if not the league's biggest teams, the Dallas Cowboys and owner Jerry Jones are currently under fire. Two different former players have come out just this week, along with other players from the past, stating on how poor the Stars' facilities actually are. Former backup quarterback Ben DiNucci and safety J. Ron Kurse were the two players this week who in separate interviews stated that Dallas facilities are, quote, like a zoo with the fan tours that they host every day. This joins other players like Dor Dorrance Armstrong and Dalton Schultz and more who have all been quoted saying that it is a disaster in the Dallas facilities. Some big changes will have to be made to their culture for fixes to take place. Going into Arizona now for the Monday night football game, Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals were looking to defend their home turf versus Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Here on LA's first drive, Herbert firing, stepping back from the 50, and he launches downfield, and it's caught Jalen Rager inside the five, and he fumbled it out of the back of the end zone. Are you kidding me? Almost zero awareness to make a mistake like that. You cannot do that at the pro level. And the Cardinals defense is on fire here early. A big, big turnover for the Arizona Cardinals. They would do nothing with the ball, however, and Herbert would get it back. Third and nine, firing. And the defensive back swatting it down. They've been strapped like glue all over this Chargers receiving core here tonight. That incomplete pass would set up a 59-yard field goal for the Chargers kicker and he would bang it down the middle, 59 from the logo to put the first points of the board on the night and give the Chargers a 3-0 lead. Cardinals on offense now from second and goal, Kyler Murray firing six yards out, Greg Dortch from the backfield and it's caught. The first touchdown of the night goes to the home field team. The Cardinals will take a 7-3 lead on a beautiful 10-play, 80-yard drive and a great catch right there by Greg Dortch. Now, with the Chiefs, about are the Chargers, excuse me, going into halftime, they'll kick a field goal to make it 6-7 and a one-point deficit. End of the second half now, the Chargers' offensive struggles would continue to tell the story, and they would only muster three more field goals. The Cardinals would escape with a 17-10 victory going into the half, going out of the game. I thank you guys for joining me tonight, and stay tuned after the break for the final weather and sports. DiGiorno is...
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. DiGiorno is bringing back its Thanksgiving pizza, which the company calls a fan favorite. The pizza includes roasted turkey, gravy, green beans, cranberries, crispy onions, a bit of mozzarella, and cheddar cheese on a Detroit-style crust. It's available nationally in Kroger's family of stores, including Harris Teeter and Ralph's, from October 30th through November 28th. Last year's pie sold out, so if you want one, get it quick. And guys, I don't know, uh, what, are your th what are your thoughts on the pizza? I'm not sure. Uh, the ready. onion seems a little uh, offsetting to me, man. Hey, uh, the <laughs> that's my favorite. I, anytime. That thing was gross. <laughs> I, want, I want a dessert pizza. Apple pie. That'd be good. Apple pie, yeah, sure, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, pumpkin pie. pie. Pumpkin pie, the DiGiorno, that'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, is there anything else about sports? Um, well, Oswego's big weekend continues. Uh, it's their final weekend for exhibition games in hockey, so the regular season will start the weekend after that. So final games and exhibition there. Yeah, and Chris, uh, how's the weather going to be looking for the, for the sports this weekend? It's going to be quite breezy, so uh, make sure you have your raincoat handy. Yeah, so the... Yeah. Uh, as you can see as well, it'll be coming through into Sunday. And then, as I said, the fall temperatures will be coming back next week with actually possibly freezing temperatures uh, into Monday morning. Yeah, what a drastic change. Go going from short weather to bundling up in a matter of 24 hours. It's pretty crazy. I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know when it's going to end. All right, that's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Oh Boy. Thank you guys for watching and have a great night.